Wait, so wait, this wait. is our robot, which is we're, is pre-programmed to be able to maneuver along a wall, which we're just watching, and you can see as it's touching the wall, it's Not you. popping right. off no, of it and continuing to move video. forward. Yeah, no, that's all right. So tell well, me again, also, uh, also on how, the, how... Let's get a picture of the underside, just to show off the sure. sensor. And you can see, you, you can see, see our sensor. Uh, you might want to zoom it out a bit. That's all right. All right, so this robot is designed to do what then? Follow walls. Follow walls and what else? Follow walls and what reaches Fo the black well, line follow. and... Follow. What? Follow the black line. Follow yes. a black line, and it continues to follow the black line until what happens? Um, until until it until doesn't, then it's meant to charge forward. Until okay. it has a higher density of black, and then it will play it out and stop. Okay, beautiful. All right, and Dan, what do we have here? This is our poster. And it tells us about what the tw um, our robot is and our challenger approach. So our challenge approach was the King of the Hill challenge, and having only an EV3 available, we chose the King of the Hill challenge and versus the Hockey 2.0 challenge. We started with um, an infrared sensor. Um, infrared. I don't know. Sensor, I don't know how to pronounce okay. it. Yeah. In, no. We're in, good. We're infrared, good. Infrared uh, sensor, um, treads, and um, remote control. We then it installed. I can't read it from the side. That's fine. Read it from there. Install. Where is it? We then installed the appropriate programming on a laptop. Added a color sensor and made the body smaller. And over here is the design of the robot. So our robot is designed like a tank. It uses touch and. In infrared and color sensors. It, it is programmed to adapt when it meets an obstacle. It uses treads instead of wheels for better traction. Excellent. Just, it's a long program. Okay. We're just bringing up the software program that actually runs the robot. This is done through Lego Mindstorms, uh, designed for an EV3 robot programming. And as you can see, we've pretty much got it all on the screen here. So the first box, the first large box that we have there, what is that program telling us to do? That's where it follows the walls. Okay. And then the next large box? It'll find the black line and then it'll follow that until it reaches the bridge. Once it's reached the bridge, it'll look for a, for a higher density of black. It will then plan out and stop all programs. Excellent. So this is the report that we had to write and um, submit to the judges as part of the competition. For extra points. For extra points, exactly. So you can see our table of contents consists of mechanical design, software design, design process, and summary. Our mechanical design, as we said, we were using treads instead of wheels because we wanted to make sure we had more, fra more traction. And you can see that we also used a mine brick, infrared sensor, color sensor, treads, gears, and accessories. Our software design was programmed using a straightaway program that we just looked at. And there's a picture of it that you just saw. In our design process, we faced some challenges as we had no layout of the course. The program didn't work the way we wanted to initially and we had no device to install the program on and the robot was initially too large for the course. So we changed those things. You can see we have a timeline then where we built phase one in March 17th. We built the phase two robot on April 24th and continued on until we're where we are today. We made those changes that we needed to and finally we basically have it designed to follow a, law, a wall, look for the black line and stop when we get to the black dot. It's unique in that its head is oriented at a 45 degree angle, it utilizes treads and uses an infrared sensor.
And once again, there's a picture of our robot. And that concludes our Guys located? We're just off Auriga Drive. It's uh, 64 Auriga, so we're, we're right off um, Prince of Wales and Hunt Club. Okay. Yeah. And we have um, uh, R&D offices here. We have R&D offices in Brussels, California. Oh wow. We have a manufacturing plant in Europe, Ontario. Okay. And uh, we produce uh, well, all kinds of broadcast equipment. So we do the um, uh, panels that they use in control booths, right? All the buttons. Yeah. The buttons and the faders. And yeah. The graphics that come up at the bottom yeah. of the screen. Yeah. That's all raw. This, wow. this is very nice, actually. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, we it's, love it. It's, it's actually you know, very awesome. So this is the type of thing that that car commercial that I saw that they had where yeah, they the, were. The one that was yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. Very cool. You want to try? Oh. Yeah, it's very nice. So as you can see, we're actually controlling the camera from the computer monitor here at the beginning. And it's all, this is basically like the camera on a track that gives the, uh, the feeling of a, uh, of a vehicle in motion. Lots of changes. So tell us what what have we had to do so far? We're increasing the proximity, and now instead of our previous idea where it detects proximity on the wall, instead it will now simply follow the wall using its proximity until it, it until it reaches the yellow line, and it'll then follow the yellow line until it reaches the black dot, in which it'll stop, display, hooray, and play a tone. Yay. Nice. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Nice job, guys. That's problem solving for you. That's how it should go, guys. Beautiful. Two runs in a row. Nice job, guys. So we're just taking a quick shot here of Team St. Emily. And we got lots of support going on here. Exactly. All pretty excited. Mainly excited because we had two successful runs before this thing started. By each lane. In each lane. Oh. So here we go. So there we go. There's St. Emily Team 1. Nice job, guys. So you can see from the picture that we've had to make some modifications to the robot, particularly on the front bumper. What we discovered was that it was catching on some of the corners and so on, so hopefully now it's going to be able to navigate a little bit better through that. So the picture is the old form, and now you can see that we don't have those pieces sticking out on the front, that we've got a straight bumper on the front with a swivel wheel under neat to enable it to work around the corners. As you can see, we are now entering into the playoffs of the various competitions and it's now starting to get real busy. I believe this one over here. This one over here is looking to navigate.
This is your sumo wrestling one. Very busy. This one down here, these robots are actually basically drawing pictures. What they call the Da Vinci contest. Here is the King of the Hill Challenge with the nine teams that are currently competing. And the judges are in the midst of adapting the course. This is the third or fourth design that they've, uh, we've seen at this point. So we will see, we will see how this goes. So St. Emily's is on the left hand side. this year. Okay. St. Emily's is on the right hand side now. So St. Emily's, St. Emily's was able to successfully get to the end. So far it's been the only robot all day that's been able to do that. So the other part of the competition here is the lads also had to meet with a judge, tell them about the project, how we built it, the various things that we went through. And we're in the midst of doing that right now.